Hi everyone and welcome back to another festive tech month of December. This is Adil from Montreal, Canada. I help my customers securely use the cloud and automate their infrastructures and applications deployments using DevOps best practices. Today, I would like to share with you my From the Trenches experience in deploying AKS private clusters in the enterprise and the challenges that come with it. So buckle up and let's set the context. Shall we? As you all know, security is priority number one for all companies. And it happens to be the case for my customer who are obviously concerned about running workloads securely in the public cloud. The most important requirements were the following. Restrict the connections to the Kubernetes API server to only a private endpoint, thus preventing its access from public internet. Enable AKS integration with corporate internal DNS. This is motivated by integration with Azure and on-premises applications as well as internal services such as self-hosted container images repositories and CI-CD pipelines. Restrict egress from AKS pods to exclusively go through a firewall NVA or a network virtual appliance in the hub VNet. And finally, forbid any creation of public IPs on the cluster. All these requirements are aimed at implementing security options for AKS and enforce compliance with the company's policies. Don't begin any further, and as I know, that we all like diagrams to illustrate the subject at hand, let's look at the overall architecture. Let's have a look at a simplified snippet of what we've got. A classical hub and spoke architecture. In the center of the diagram, we've got a next-gen firewall virtual appliance, securing and controlling our egress traffic to the internet. An AKS cluster is deployed into a subnet within a dedicated virtual network, referred to later in the demo as the AKS VNet. A Jumpbox VM and a DNS server are deployed in an other VNet referred to as the user's VNet. And on-prem is connected to the hub VNet via an express route. To fully understand the matter at hand, here is a little reminder of AKS private cluster particularities. At the time of provisioning the private AKS cluster, a DNS private zone is automatically created in the AKS nodes resource group. This makes it possible for the nodes to resolve the FQDN of API server, which has a private IP. By default, this DNS zone is linked to the virtual network used by the AKS cluster. Accordingly, any VM using a NIC attached to this VNet can resolve the FQDN of the API server thanks to this link. However, this FQDN cannot be resolved from any machine or service outside of this virtual network. And this is our issue. CI-CD pipelines cannot communicate with the API servers to deploy, to deploy Kubernetes workloads to the cluster. And developers and ops cannot perform kubectl commands against the cluster's server API. While trying to fulfill the business and technical requirements, I was faced with many challenges. The greatest one was integrating with the company's DNS system. The issue was the following. When using a VNet configured to use a custom DNS for the AKS cluster, which is, by the way, normal in companies with hybrid cloud integration, the cluster nodes are not able to contact the API server at the time of provisioning. In another situation, we're not even using custom DNS on the VNet, for instance, any attempt to resolve the API service IP address from a machine 
or tool outside the VNet on which the AKS cluster is hosted will fail. This is because the DNS private zone mentioned before is the only zone able to resolve the FQDN of the API server by default. To solve this, you need to link this DNS zone to any other VNet from which you want to resolve the FQDN. And from my customer's particular case of using custom DNS, I needed to come up with a global enterprise solution to resolve the FQDN from any location that securely needed to access the API. After an awesome collaboration with the Azure Networking and SecOps team, a big shout out to Mathieu and Guillaume, the final solution looked like this. Configure the central self-managed enterprise DNS system on Azure to use conditional forwarding for all AKS private link zones to use the Azure internal DNS 168.63.129.16. Configure the custom DNS used by the individual teams to use this global DNS for resolving AKS private DNS zones. And finally, bootstrapping the private DNS zone created at AKS provisioning to be automatically linked with the global DNS VNet to allow AKS cluster to come up. All right, so uh, let's do a quick de demo of what we just discussed. Okay, let's see what happens when no custom DNS is configured on the environment and we're only using the Azure internal DNS. So I will connect to the uh, jump box there and from there, I installed the uh, AZ CLI so we can have what we have on the cluster. So this is the cluster that is provisioned and I will connect to it. Okay, so I have it there. So if I try to um, do a queue cuddle and get the list of the nodes, I received this error, which means that the lookup of the API servers FQDN doesn't work. So let's go out from here. What we need to do is to um, link the DNS zone with the virtual network on which the jump box is, is installed. If I go here, so this is the zone created. So I'll refresh by default, it links uh, this DNS zone to the VNet on which the AKS cluster is deployed, as we mentioned earlier. So I will create that link manually between this DNS zone and the VNet on which the VM, the jump box is located. All right, let's... Um see the script we have to link the DNS. So I have it here. Uh, I have all the parameters uh, um, declared already. So let's link it. Okay, this will create the link. Okay, the link has been created. If I go here and refresh, I can see that we have a link uh, to the uh, VM Jumpbox VNet. We'll try to connect to the Jumpbox now. All right, now that I am back on the Jumpbox, uh, let's run again the kubectl get nodes. And now we can see that the uh, FQDN is resolved and we can communicate and interact with the cluster from another VNet. So let's uh, take a look at this other situation where we have a custom DNS server configured on our VNet. We can see it here. So, and we will try to create our AKS cluster with that 
custom DNS configured. So just for you to see, the configuration is like this. We're using the internal Azure DNS servers as conditional forwarders. So anything that we want to resolve, we will forward it to those internal Azure DNSs. Okay. So let's create the AKS cluster. Well, after a couple of minutes, the creation of the AKS cluster failed. So what happened? Custom DNS is configured to use the Azure internal, internal DNS server. So what is missing? What's missing is the link between the private DNS zone of the AKS cluster and the VNet on which the custom DNS we're using is configured. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the um, script that creates the link between the DNS zone and the VNet. So we will configure it, um, we will add it to the uh, creation of the AKS private cluster script, and we will add it for like a background job that we'll run while we're waiting for the cluster to be provisioned. And it will run after three minutes and then it will keep on until it finds the dns private zone and then it links it to the vnet So the cluster has been created. Let's go and see if we can resolve the FQDN from our Jambox. So we add the credentials, okay. So yeah, so we see that the link between the DNS zone and the VNet makes the trick and we can connect to the server. By default, AKS provisions a load balancer with a public IP used for egress traffic. In order to prevent the cluster from having this public IP, we can customize cluster egress with a user-defined route. When an AKS cluster is provisioned using the option outbound type user-defined routing, the cluster will behave as follows. AKS will not create a load balancer with public IP, and the cluster and its workload egress traffic will be routed to the NVA configured in the UDR. You should know that to be able to use this option, the user-defined route should be configured on the AKS cluster subnet prior to provision in the cluster. However, users of the cluster will still be able to create Kubernetes service with type load balancer using public IPs. In order to implement the security requirements of my customer, an Azure policy add-on for AKS definition needed to be enforced. Enforce internal load balancers in Kubernetes cluster. Before creating the AKS cluster, I will just uh, make sure that we have a policy assigned to our subscription or to our, to our resource group to enforce the internal load balancer uh, only on, on the cluster. So here in the policy definitions, I would just filter by Kubernetes policies. 
and then I will just look for the internal one which is enforce in channel load balancers in Kubernetes cluster so this one I will assign it uh, I have the scope it can be assigned either on um, subscription level or on the resource group so what I will do I will leave it on the subscription level so wh wh whatever cluster I create in this subscription will inherit this policy and we will have this definition applied to, to the cluster so let's assign it and it's enforced so um, let's create it all right so now we're ready to create our cluster attach it to the subnet on which the AKS cluster will be created so we have a firewall already provisioned let's look at the uh, script to create the UDR so this is the script it's getting the IP from the uh, internal IP of the firewall and then creating a root table and then creating a root within it to direct all traffic to Azure Firewall and then attaching it to the subnet. So let's create the UDR. In the meantime, I would just look at uh, the list of the UDRs we have, or the or the root tables. I mean, not, not the the user defined, but the root tables. We don't have any uh, at the time, so it's it's been created. Uh, we'll just wait a little bit, and then when it's created, we can we can see the configuration. Okay. I go here you can see that we have our UDR here and you can see the configuration it's directing traffic to our NVA and if I go to the subnets I can see that our AKS subnet is using the freshly created user-defined route resource group of the nodes the nodes resource group and I will look at the um, components configured so we have the private DNS zone we have the NSG we have the um, virtual machine skill set and the API the private endpoint and the network interface and we do not have any load balancer the default one that is called Kubernetes so this is because we are using a user defined root for that cluster that's for thing so that we're good on this and then if we go back to the cluster and we will check the policy and see what we have if it has been um, created or not yet I know that it takes uh, about 15 minutes or something so normally we have an assignment we will just for uh, the add-on for AKS is enabled now uh, let's look at it I will see all the pods that are running we can see the um, gatekeeper system namespace with the gatekeeper pods running and we have the Azure policy here running on the cube system so we're all set well these are the solutions we use to fulfill these security policies and technical requirements the user defined routes which went GA last June and the Azure policy add-on for AKS which went GA last November so this is how we were able to integrate our AKS clusters with enterprise DNS and comply with corporate security policies video and I hope you um, enjoyed it see you next time